Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning series. With us today we have Dr. Mark Abelan, his role as higher specialist training in cardiology, sports cardiology and the screening of sudden cardiac death in the young. Dr. Abela, thank you for being with us here today. Um, uh, on to our first question, we'll be discussing sudden cardiac death in the young and how would you define sudden cardiac death, doctor? Great, thank you. So thank you for the invitation. So basically, sudden death is defined as a, co- as a death which is sudden and uncertain previous in patients who are not previously known to suffer from heart disease, who die suddenly within an hour from onset of symptoms. Uh, it's been with us for a number of years, dating back with the first reported that to 500 BC. Uh, there was a young long distance runner who went to Athens to inform the Athenian government that the Persians had lost the war and as soon as he was giving the news, he dropped dead suddenly. So we think that this is the first recorded sudden death in history. Obviously, there has been a number of developments since, particularly in the era of exercise-related deaths pertaining to athletes. And so there were a lot of interest in seeing why athletes were dying suddenly. We've had a number of reported deaths in high elite athletes. So obviously, there have been a number of developments in this area. And why is it so relevant in athletes? What, what predisposes them to this disease? Yes, of course. So athletes have what we call a substrate because they do very vigorous athletic activities. They tend to get these substrates, which we define like hypertrophy in the ventricles, for example, fibrosis, uh, scars or necrosis, which together with a lot of metabolic abnormalities, which obviously take place during exercise, like acid-base disturbance, electrolyte abnormalities, and changes in temperature, would predispose to abnormal activity in the heart, sometimes going on to even causing ventricular arrhythmias and obviously contributing to death. And that obviously accentuates, emphasizes the need for screening of athletes. Yes, exactly. So obviously, athletes are prone to certain adaptations in the heart, both in the structure, in the function, and also in the electricity of the heart which is why screening is important. Screening is important because when we screen with a history and examination and an ECG, the combination of all three offers a sensitivity of more than 85% for picking up conditions which can actually contribute towards sudden death. And is there a reason also to consider screening other people, non-athletes, for this disease? Yes. Now, obviously, when we speak of sudden death in athletes, we are speaking of a very small portion of the national cohort everywhere in the world. The majority of people will obviously be non-competitive athletes if they do exercise regularly, and most of the population would not even do exercise regularly. Starting with the non-competitive athletes, obviously people are doing more and more exercise with a trend slowly, slowly getting there that people who are above a certain age group tend to pick up exercise later on in their life. With these, I would be referring to veteran athletes. So we have a concept which is quite new with the veterans and obviously they are prone to other problems, predominantly coronary disease because of their age and risk factors. But we also have athletes who are young athletes who do exercise on a recreational basis. And we have evidence which suggests that exercise related sudden death is more prevalent in the recreational cohort, and that accounts for more than 80-90% of these, these people. So there is an argument as to why we should just screen the competitive athletes, why not screen the non-competitive athletes, or moving on to saying why screen everyone. I mean, there is, there is a scope for that, and based on this, we have data coming from Corrado et al., where basically screening in Italy Italy, from particularly in the Veneto region, was one of the first regions in the world where screening of athletes was instituted on a widespread basis. These started in the late 70s, and we have data going spanning over 20 years, which looks at the death rates in athletes and comparing them to non-athletes. Obviously, the death rate in, non, in, in athletes is slowly, slowly, slowly going down. The data collection period ended in around 2004-2005 period and at the end of the study the authors noted a significant change between athletes and non-athletes with now non-athletes actually at a marginally higher risk compared to their athletic counterparts. Why? It's not that the disease has decreased 
in, in incidence or prevalence, it's purely because athletes are obviously being screened and their counterparts, their non-athletic counterparts are not being screened. So why neglect the rest of the population and just go with screening of athletes? True. And we're mentioning screening. Um, obviously, it involves a number of tests. Can you further elaborate? Yes. So uh, with this going into the Atlantic drift, we call it is extremely important. So on one side, we have the United States, which recommend going with a questionnaire and an examination to at assess at least for risk of sudden death. And on the other side, we have the Europeans and most of the world, which would recommend doing both an examination and the questionnaire, but also going to the electrocardiogram. The ECG adds a lot to the diagnosis of causes which may cause sudden death. The sensitivity of all three together, as I've mentioned already, is more than 90%. We've had evidence from registries in the Scandinavian countries which looked at sudden deaths, and we have noted that those who died and had an ECG before they died, more than 80% actually had an abnormality which was, which was missed, which is why the ECG is crucial in this. And what does the questionnaire involve? Does it screen for previous symptoms such as syncope or so? Exactly. So basically, obviously, with sudden death, exercise is a very important player. So we look at symptoms, particularly symptoms during exercise, and by this we mean chest pain, shortness of breath, syncope, and sometimes dizziness. Obviously, differentiating between cardiac and non-cardiac causes for chest pain and syncope is extremely crucial. Going on into family history of sudden death, and with this I emphasize that it is extremely important if there is a family history, people should be aware that the cause might be hereditary and they should also be screened. We normally take a cutoff of deaths which are sudden in origin in those aged less than 50 years. So people who have such a history should be screened if they are athletes or non-athletes, it doesn't matter. It, in yeah. fact, I, I know as well that uh, you were also spearheading a new project. Yeah. It's called the Beat It Project. It's yeah. quite a, a, a good name because obviously with regards to Beat It, you're obviously trying to send a message with regards to the heart rate and also because you beat this disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to know more about what it involves and how it may help the Maltese public in general. Yes, of course. So seeing that we are a small country with one tertiary center, it is extremely easy compared to other big nations to coordinate a mass screen project, which is the main scope of Beat It. The idea originated from a widespread screening program being held on a voluntary basis in the UK, led by the NGO CRY, Cardiac Risk and the Young, who basically go into the communities wherever it may be in all corners of the UK and screen those who want to be screened. The NGO was funded by families of those who had someone in the family who unfortunately died of a sudden death or by families who had friends maybe who died of a death. Seeing that we have a small cohort, obviously, the gene pool plays a very crucial role. We have a small gene pool which obviously predisposes to more problems sometimes. So the Beat It project wants to obviously increase awareness both amongst the non-medical and the medical community out there that sudden cardiac death in Malta is a reality and it can happen. We've had, unfortunately, four deaths in schools over the past 10 years. So that is extremely, extremely important to look into. Besides the awareness, obviously, we want to identify those risks at high risk for complications before we actually have problems. Sudden death is obviously the end stage of those problems but we must not forget that patients might present with vague symptoms sometimes, such as lethargy, maybe missed beats, palpitations, losing consciousness, or chest pain, which might all be put down as being non-significant non if seen by a, a physician, which might not be used to these things. And obviously, by identifying those high-risk individuals, we can institute treatment before problems arise. With these conditions, we tend to offer also advice with respect to modes, different methods, how we may prevent problems. With this, I mean sometimes lifestyle modifications, so in terms of diet and what medications we can give or not give, uh, ideally, uh, with exercise-related recommendations. Sometimes people with these conditions are not, uh, not advised to practice certain hobbies or certain occupations, so there are a lot of implications there. 
I understand that obviously public awareness is necessary and I also understand that since these four deaths which have happened over the past decades people have become more and more aware of the need for um, uh, early intervention and possibly screening. And I also understand that one of the aims of the BTIT project would be also to see the feasibility of screening in schools. How can you go about this? Yes, so obviously screening is easy, cheap and very reliable, which is why the BTIT project was set up. Obviously we do screen the youngsters in schools for scoliosis and one of the objectives obviously of the BTIT project is to potentially assess whether screening for sudden deaths in schools is feasible on the long term. This has never been done anywhere else in the world. Screening in athletes is a must only in Italy and in Israel by law. And obviously sporting bodies do institute and, and emphasize the importance of screening for athletes before they compete. But the legal basis is only in those two countries. With respect to non-athletes, there have been mass screening projects held in Italy, in the UK and also in Japan. But to my knowledge, this is the first national screening project anywhere in the world covering a cohort of a specific age group. So this is extremely important for our country. With respect to preventing deaths, obviously, we need to prevent deaths by making people more aware and more confident to treat sudden cardiac arrest. So I emphasize that hopefully with this project, the public understands how important it is for early recognition of a cardiac arrest, which is why in schools nowadays, we are pushing towards having AEDs in all schools. This is slowly and slowly being implemented. And hopefully in the near future, we will come to a situation where schools do encourage staff to train and recertify in providing basic CPR. And I understand that obviously with regards to the procurement of AED machines, defibrillators, there has been a lot of awareness, bicycle marathons and collections marathons, so that they can obviously procure these machines. But um, obviously that would be one of the last resorts, a patient, a person who has suffered cardiac arrest and obviously will need to be reanimated. You wish to target the problem earlier on. Exactly. And uh, hopefully we will manage through this interview and through your own project to further the knowledge, the public knowledge and increase your support, the support for this, for this endeavor. Um, what can you comment about defibrillators in, school, uh, in schools? You've already mentioned them, but are they useful and how can we help motivate more teachers as doctors to um, possibly follow BLS courses and, the, um, and possibly train to use defibrillators better? Now, obviously, basic life support is extremely easy, but people might be not willing to, to give help simply because they are not met with the situation on a regular basis. Obviously, this is quite rare with sudden death in the young a, being as rare from one to three per hundred thousand per year. So this is extremely, extremely rare. I must emphasize this, so I do not want to alarm anyone. But obviously, if it does happen, people must be prepared. And there are courses available which anyone can undergo and undertake, and you need to recertify every so often. Uh, the AED itself is extremely easy to use and itself prompting those, uh, the person who's using it to, to tell him what to do. So with respect to confidence, I think confidence is extremely crucial in those not trained in the medical profession. Uh, I understand that children at a very young age in the Scandinavian countries are giving lessons about basic CPR and obviously we have shown that out of hospital cardiac arrest in the Scandinavian countries is has a much better prognosis because obviously there is less damage to muscle in the heart and to the brain because CPR is instituted earlier on. So obviously I would I would appreciate and obviously encourage all those involved to try and teach the public out there that CPR is very important, extremely important and obviously if trained very easy to do. And obviously your appeal is addressed to all the professionals who have contact with children, whether they're teachers, LSAs, whatever. And also obviously our e-learning interviews are also addressed mainly towards healthcare professionals. Exactly. Now, um, imagine I'm a healthcare professional, I'm watching this interview and I want to help out with your project, the Beat It project. How can I approach you? What can I do to help you? Okay, so basically the Beat It project is at this point in time only for fifth form students. We have chosen secondary school, obviously, because the education system in Malta does not permit the same study design to be implemented in post-secondary school. 
we have chosen specific, specifically fifth form students simply because sometimes with puberty we tend to get false positive changes in the ECG. Sometimes we get very bad T-wave inversions, uh, but uh, for example, it's a very a, a valid point would be, for example, them being preceded by J-point elevation. With puberty-related changes, sometimes we can cause more harm than good because of false positives, obviously. So we thought that going to an age where we do not expect these changes to obviously screen those population only. Thank you, Dr. Abel. I don't know whether you have any other conclusive remarks which you may add. Yes, obviously screening is important and useful. With respect to the local scenario, we do have the facilities to cater for assessment for sudden death. Over the years, we have gone to recognize, grown to recognize that this is also relevant in Malta, and we have had a number of developments over the past few years. With the introduction of provocation testing for Brugada syndrome with cardiac MRI, for example, and with genetic testing, it has taken up a very important chunk of the clinical matters that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. We do have a cardiomyopathy clinic and an inherited arrhythmia clinic, which take care of uh, the problems which mostly give, give rise to sudden death in the adolescents. So I'm speaking about mostly cardiomyopathies and channelopathies. So the services are there. Obviously, if there is suspicion, if there is suspicion for sudden death, please do not hesitate to get in touch with the department and we can look into it in detail. The services are there, the investigations are there, and we're also willing to increase awareness through our own um, advocation as public, as professionals, and also to the general public who watches these learning videos. I invite you to approach us, to approach Dr. Mark Abel and the cardiology team in order to further our advances as a country with regards to beating sudden cardiac death syndrome in the young. Thank you, Dr. Abel, for being Thank with you. us here today. We invite you to share and like this video and subscribe to our Synapse Facebook page and to follow us on Facebook for further episodes. Thank you so much. Thank you.